early August 1992, a group of NIFA activists withdrew from a stalemate situation in the Mummel Gulf and travelled to the Karai Plateau west of Kempsey. Reported sightings of the supposedly extinct eastern quoll by the CSIRO, local landholders and officers of the Forestry Commission itself were thought to be sufficient grounds to force an end to logging operations in the remaining two old growth compartments on the plateau. NIFA demanded that a comprehensive survey be undertaken to verify and locate any populations of the quoll and assess all threats by logging to its survival. The activists set up camp and were determined to stay until the National Parks and Wildlife Service revoked the Forestry Commission's logging licence. During the night they captured the dozer working there by erecting a large tripod through its blade effectively immobilising it. The dozer was now an effective bargaining chip in negotiations with the Commission. We'll swap the dozer for the quoll, they said. Expecting confrontation, activists further blockaded the road by use of concrete pipes. Here we see the digging in and preparation of the pipes. Holes are chipped into the bottom of the pipe. Fencing wire is laced through the holes and then a chain is attached. The pipe is now ready for someone to climb in and lock on. Pipes have always been the most effective way of securing the road and ensuring safety to the camp. After negotiations with the Forestry Commission and National Parks, logging was stopped until a fauna survey could be conducted. While these surveys were being conducted, the North East Forest Alliance did some research of their own into the timber supply management of the Kempsey area. Um, a number of years ago, the Commission had claimed that the Kempsey area was uh, about to close down because of a lack of timber. And uh, we wanted to see what these claims were based on. And in doing the research, we found out that <coughs> that the Commission had actually overestimated the amount of timber in the Kempsey area by three years. And all of this uh, overestimated timber came from the Karai Plateau. As a result, uh, the logging in the Kempsey area was going to close because the Forestry Commission had not been able to assess the amount of timber available, and not because of any blockade, and not because of any act of Parliament trying to protect endangered species. So while the surveys were continuing, we um, compiled a report, presented it down to Parliament uh, and had a series of questions asked in Parliament concerning the Forestry Commission management. Um, as a result, uh, the Commission was highly embarrassed by this information, uh, although still refusing to acknowledge that what we were claiming was correct, uh, despite it appearing in their own figures and reports. So <coughs> despite um, the Forestry Commission attempting to ignore a very serious management problem, they continued to blame protesters for causing the lack of timber in the Karai area um, and we were forced to continue our blockade in the Karai forests in order to draw attention to, to this shortfall of timber and to make the public aware of the reasons why uh, there was not enough timber available.
Two months later in October, NEFA activists returned to Karai to prevent the resumption of logging because the surveys they had forced the Commission and Park Service to undertake were inadequate. They blockaded the road once again. The second day we woke really early in the morning and almost immediately a, a car was heard and it drove into view and drove straight into our tripod bipod at fast speed so we made a move down to the bipod. This didn't deter the driver who hit it about four times and on the fourth time the whole lot came crashing down. Unfortunately on top of me it sort of trapped me underneath it. Um, quite painful. Noel Irvine got out of the car and we realised that Steve Bishop, the district forester, was the driver of the vehicle and he wound his window up and locked the door. Noel was very unsettled and we basically talked for about 20 or 30 minutes. But then we realised that all the contractors had mustered up the road and they now came up to where our blockade was and proceeded to chop through the, the tripod bipod. All the time dialogue was ensuing and, and we were basically talking to them, but it was obvious they wanted to get in that day and then they weren't going to be deterred by anything we were doing. So the low loader came in, they got the dozer off and drove that into the compartment. Uh, finally the police showed up, this was a couple of hours later, and um, they just basically moved us out of the closed forest. And um, So we proceeded to shift camp and that's where we were by the end of that day. With the activists safely under police guard outside the closed forest, logging recommenced and log trucks arrived to take the quota saw logs to the Borrow Mill in Kempsey. Public subsidies allowed the road to be built to $12 million, cost $12 million to the taxpayer is going to borrow. 98% of the quota here is going to borrow. We feel that this is legal. This the plan for this operation up the road is illegal. The activists, now disheartened, waited for the log trucks to return and as a last ditch measure, some women decided to lay on the road to prevent them getting out.
draw attention to the logging that was occurring, NIFA took their protests into Kempsey and staged a sit-in at the Forestry Commission's office. They asked to speak to District Forester Steve Bishop, but he refused to see them. Meanwhile, outside, the tribe unloaded three poles and proceeded to erect a tripod on the pavement. Well, what's happening is that the public's being refused access to the Forestry Commission office here in Kempsey and we were told by Dean Armstrong, who's a forester in this office, who was actually in the car when um, Steve Bishop um, bashed his car into a tripod on top of protesters and actually quite seriously injured Tim Somerville, a NEPA spokesperson. And Dean Armstrong, after refusing to talk to us, has talked to the media and now he's left the office and he's running away and jumping in his car and leaving. So he obviously doesn't want to address the issues of forest mismanagement and the issue of the endangered coal. So we're pretty pissed off, really. Kevin Barrasted here, National Party member for um, Karawai Plateau. And what do you think about this illegal logging, uh, Kevin? Well, we've always done illegal logging. There's nothing wrong with it. What about the dead quolls they found? dead coal. You know, I mean, they just run around in the bush with their disgusting toilet habits anyway, you know, none of them are on the electoral roll. So what do, you, what do you reckon you should do with these greenies here? Oh, I reckon we ought to dig a hole and put them in it. Well, get them a, what they need is, a, is, a, is an honest job fucking something up. That's what they need. <laughs> a, a real job. You know, not, none of this airy fairy nonsense, they need a real job really stuffing something up. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, no, no worries, Bess. Finally, Steve Bishop agreed to speak with Nefa. Yeah, but it's better that he wait until the surveys have been and the results have been finalised before you then... Yeah, we did surveys and we're satisfied with but the results. But the report hasn't even been... How, how can an interim result... We, we certainly got to the, the early you know, indications from the report. Yeah, but your requirement that Jim Shield said was that you do um, hair tubes and scat analysis. And, were and that they were done, but the results of those had not been finalised before you let this man start logging in the compartment. It was also used the base of the National Parks trapping results and also the base of the bio trapping results. 
We met with the parks on that, discussed it with them, and they said, all right, go ahead with these commitments. So national parks are there to provide that? That's correct. Okay. Mm. So the other thing... If they were satisfied with it, well, I have no reasons why not. Mm. Well, the national parks have to be on Yeah, well, again, if they're the one who holds a 120 license and responsible for the law line. Mm. Mm. Now, if they said it's okay to go back in, you know, I cannot then tell the contractor on this way to longer. So I'll be okay. And the profits are going to borrow. The profits are going out of this country. Australia's been ripped off by these fat bureaucrats and their mates in borrow. So, it's like you won't be doing surveys for the Sudia or the other bay glider before you've all compiled with them at all? We certainly will, yes. You will. You will, do, you will come out and do surveys for the Sudia and the other bay glider before Friday. Before you allow logging to continue and compile with them at all? Yes. Yes? Can I come out with you? No, because we're, we're not there, you know, as uh, tour guides. No, I'm, I'm uh, not expected to be taken on a tour. I'd like to see yeah, what survey would, methodology you use. Yeah, uh, my, my foreman will do it, and I'll be quite happy with this. We, we already had a bit of a program together with it. I, I'd really like to go and feel for him when he does that, and okay. I think I'll I'd be right to be to involved in that. Do you feel that the 405 days that they were there doing their trapping was sufficient to get the evidence required on such an important issue? Well, the National Parks did a, a, an eight-day trapping program. We did an eight-day crack trapping program. So that was, you know, fairly, fairly but intensive. But the National Park Service, Service did recommend that more intensive surveys be done at a time when the species was more likely to be active. Yeah, that's right. We will. That was a recommendation. Well, but in, yeah, in before the logging occurred. But in the, main, in the meantime, uh, well, again, you'll talk to the National Parks about this. Mm. Yes, I will, don't worry. <laughs> mm. But, yes, they're put under just as much political pressure as you are. Which means they don't adequately manage for endangered fauna. And just because of economic values, we're going to be witnessing the extinction of many of our species. And it's just not bloody acceptable. It costs Australians to log their own old growth. Last year they spent $16 million. Taxpayers are paying for the resource to be exploited. The Japanese and the Americans are making the profit. But the other thing I'm a bit concerned about is they are allowed to pick whatever trees they want to take. And I think it's up to the Forestry Commission to go and mark the trees to be taken. Yeah, well, we have done some markings, you know, delineating out the main forest areas, some wildlife trees. Also, I've given instruction to the faller, you know, saying that, you know, even though it may not be marked as a wildlife tree, if you see evidence of notching in the trees or, you know, or, you know something for a studio, any of the things I pointed out to him, mm -hmm. he must leave that. Yeah, but he can't. So, so you're leaving it up to well, the, can, it's the know, cutter's it's, responsibility to make that choice, not it's, yours. It's, it's, you're it's, leaving it's, it up it's to quite them. quite a few people's responsibilities. What I'm saying is that, you know, we have a look, you know, it's quite, you know, we could probably walk past something that the E sees, or vice versa. It just doubles our chances. Yeah. We're not paying you good money. As our state, as our district forest, to, to walk past a few trees, so are we? I mean, surely, if you are managing the forest, you're managing the forest. That's what I understand as a as a, as a citizen of New South Wales. Yes. You know, well, if I, I, if I was if I was a district forester, I wouldn't after, be. After inspecting the stand, I'm fairly confident of the adequate wildlife trees. You're fairly confident. Oh yeah. Fairly confident. That doesn't make me feel too like I can rest in my bed at night and not not go back to the forest and protest. Before dawn on Tuesday the 13th of October, NEFA, surrounded by police for five days, unleashed a daring raid to capture back the road. An old panel van was driven up the road and parked across it. Wow. Cheese. Yeah, we, we got something for you this morning. At 
Can you just check? Can you let Jeff a bit? Yeah, just check it The wheel not turned on? Yeah. yeah. The two policemen on duty, unable to establish radio contact with Kempsey, were virtually powerless to do anything except watch helplessly. Fuck, I got my hand caught between the car and the tire. Dead car, never missed the beat. My toe. Oh, there is cold, he's holding his old. Sun shines on my toes pretty soon. When the moon went down, the green sky got up. And fucked them all up. Logging contractors and day shift police finally arrived for work to be greeted with an instant blockade. There's been no attempt to get through our blockade, so we're still holding the road, holding it fairly strongly. Over. No, still no report from our Ford reconnaissance. I mean, it's a long walk, so it might take a while. While all the action was going on down at the front, we decided to go for a walk up to the back to uh, have a look where the bulldozer was. We weren't prepared for any protracted blockade or anything up there, we were just going for a walk. But um, every time a police car came along the road, because they were doing regular patrols, we had to dive off into the bush. So the bank was too high to hop on. <laughs> oh, shit, eh? They're too buggered, did it? <laughs> yeah, I was too buggy to run the fucking thing. I ran in the bush and just went tumble fucking head over the hill into the bush. I crawled out of the bush, wasn't aware of the um, extended closed forest. I was aware of the old, the old enclosure. I wasn't aware of the new enclosure. I walked out. Policeman didn't give me a chance. Didn't explain to me. Said stop. I stopped. Went peacefully. 
I got arrested and charged for being in an enclosed area. And so were five other people who were arrested with me and charged with being in an enclosed area, weren't informed by the police. We're going for a bushwalk and we got arrested. A couple of women hopped into a pipe, tried to secure themselves together. Um, they were shortly discovered by police doing patrol up and down the road and br brutally removed, or the cop tried, attempted to remove them. We were both um, locked very tightly with chains around our foot to combine together. Um, our f hands at the, t at the time weren't tied because there was not enough time for it, for it. and we were just um, hot. We were shaped, it's shaped like that and we both had heads sticking out here and our feet were chained like that and we were lying there and next minute everyone said quick the cops are coming so we just put some string around us and held tightly as though we were locked on both hands and feet and so we stood there and um, the man came up to me, I don't know his number he was, um, I think he looks like a sergeant, or he's wearing a cowboy hat now anyway. And he had a brown moustache and brown hair, pale skin, kind of gaunt looking, reasonably athletic. Late 30s, I'd say, mid, you know, back to 40 maybe. And um, he came up to me and he said, and he said something, do you know you're in an illegal area? And I said, yes, we're aware of that. And he said, um, he came in and had a look at me, he looked at me and then he went to grab my, he said, you're not locked on, and he grabbed there, the pressure point there under my thing, and yanked my neck, like, from, hold on, from behind, he just like yanked it up, pulling me out of the, pulling me up and out of the compartment, and then he, um, he said, you're not, you're not um, locked on at all, you're not locked on at all, and I said, I yelled and screamed, stop hurting me, you're fucking hurting me, stop hurting me, and he said, I'm not touching you, I'm not hurting you, then he just like, kept yanking me and at the same time that was pulling Bo with me and it was like full on like really hard and tight around my legs and I couldn't like um, resist at all and he kept yanking me back and back and that's about all he did and then he just like said well I'll come back for you later and at that moment he left and arrested someone else <laughs> and then I got off by other people. Yeah, did I just grab you or tackle you? Oh no, I couldn't tackle me. I gave myself up actually. Too tired. Because there was no cherry picker available, the police were unable to break the blockade. The next day, the cherry picker finally turned up with police reinforcements to clear the obstructed road. In Everyone has equal. Yeah, yeah. Well, would you like to just listen? Okay. You to move these vehicles and to move the tripods. We'll do so immediately so we can get our vehicles. To Where's us. instructing you to stop raping the forest, mate? Yeah. How about stop? Are you going to do this? Are you going to move? Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. They've got ridiculous. How about the other day when you moved the tripod? Are you going to move? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we yeah, we How oh, about that? Could Here he is. Given you a direction, um, are you going to comply with his direction or do we have to move your vehicle? We'll get no, back to the rest and well, get one. back to you on it. We'd actually like Wait, next week? No, but he's in the hour. I didn't look at. This vehicle? He could have issued that directive then. Okay, okay. That's criminal negligence last Thursday. Well, arrest him. Come on. Do we have any rights for what's going on? Can any policeman witness that? You don't have an interpretation. Who owns this vehicle? <laughs> You won't tell me your name, you're ashamed of your name. You're not supporting the law of the land. Every time you don't give your name like that, you're ashamed of your name. <laughs> Police work in this situation. 
aren't qualified. Who polices the commission? These bastards have been operating in secrecy for 70 years, trashing our country.
We're just trying to pull the tripod pole out, which was going to topple this guy off the tripod up there. Bipod? Uh, off the bipod up there. Just quit, just quit. <laughs> that man there. Stop swearing. 
Come on. Oh, I swear you're swearing. Stop swearing. You're swearing. Swear. You don't know you're taking time for us and swearing. Stop yeah, swearing. stop throwing oh. people around. <laughs> oh, hang on with me, Look, we want more intelligence, please. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not dealing with Fred. Ripping about a nose or something. They're off the road. They're off the road. They're off the road. They're off the road. Let them go. They're off the road. Let them go. Let them go. They're off the road. They're off the road. off the road. Now let them go. Go. They're off the road. Now let it go, he's left the road. Bloody hell! Keep the language down. What's the way you're doing? Let it go! Come on, I can't pull it off. Let it go, for fuck's sake! What we did? Just let it go! Let him go! Off the road! What more do you want? Let it go! They're only girls! Let them go! Come on, let go of her wrist, mate. What are you doing to her wrist? Just let it go, man. Let it go. Go, guys, come on. They'll fucking break your wrist. Just go. You got me in the break. Let go. He does that. I know, he likes it. It's bullshit! 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 Courtesy of the rescue squad. I just, I'm so glad they're here because I've just been hanging out to be rescued. <laughs> Fucking ferals trained to be from the cars. You know how it is. Oi, rescue oi, squad. Oi, they can make a great job. Hang on, that. Yeah. That's got it. Oh, it's hurting my neck. It's hurting my neck. It's hurting my neck. It's hurting my neck. Hurting my neck. They're hurting your neck. Yeah, they're ready. Yeah, it's pretty, um... Don't grind her, mate. We're gonna both fucking blow up. No way. Don't use that bloody grinder in here. No, grinder. Not with a petrol leak there. A petrol leak party everywhere. It's tanker petrol here this morning. Come on, how does this work? Hydraulic. Oh, um, it's coming, yeah. One of us, one of you guys is down in the tobacco. Is that? <laughs> See you, Steve. 
I love you, Marina. Right, yep, okay, I'm with you, under special conditions. We just thought that there may also be something about it being the forester or district forester's responsibility as well. <coughs> okay, man, I'll just get the <coughs> appropriate people over. Hey, Megan! I'm Damon, he just rang, um, he'd like uh, yourself and anyone else that was in the car. Okay, Megan, you're on the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do we want to do? A bipod off the back of that one or what? A bipod in the yeah, middle yeah. so that they can do a yeah, get away from the chair picker. Yeah. 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 Yeah.